Well, welcome to the fifth in our series of online rates roundtable discussions sponsored by World Voices Organization. My energetic co-host, Ann Ganguza, I would say lovely, but that's sexist. So I'm just going to say energetic co-host, Ann Ganguza, and I began this series of monthly conversations back in August. Uh, they've been well received in the community. It's all about voiceover compensation challenges in today's marketplace. Now, we've tagged it with the term RADAR, which stands for Rates and Digital Ad Reform, because we think the greatest challenge is with the sea change in media prompted by a growing incursion in the marketplace by digital media. And yes, I'm reading all this, so <laughs> just, uh, just you don't think I'm that erudite. Uh, we have a great group today uh, for our discussion concerning online casting sites, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read through these introductions really quickly because we want to make sure everybody gets, gets their due. Uh, first, we have Armin Herstetter. He is the founder of Badalgo.com, Europe's number one online resource for voiceover talent. He's been in voice acting since 2004, started Badalgo in 2008, and just a couple of weeks ago, Badalgo relaunched, featuring not only an up-to-date design, but also bleeding-edge technology like Badalgo Call, an extremely easy-to-use hi-fi audio connection right, uh, right out of almost any browser. <clears throat> Excuse me. Dealing with a cold. Armin is married. He has a two-year-old daughter. Second one on the way. Congratulations, Armin. And Thanks. lives in Munich, Germany. It's not, not a very conducive hour of the day in Munich right now. So we really appreciate Armin joining us from Europe. Thanks, um, on, man. <laughs> on the phone with us is Simon Lopez from ANG Audio. Uh, Simon is the production manager for ANG Audio here in Las Vegas. They have a great online casting website, and they do all their auditioning through the online system. It's very very easy to use. Uh, Dave Wallace is a voice actor from LA who was to join us, but he got a gig at the last second. So we tip a hat to him for getting some work. And if he can join us later, he might. Um, Dan Leonard is there with the glasses and the mustache on his t-shirt. Uh, he is the Wovo Vice President of Technical Certification. And uh, between him and Joe Davis, who I will introduce next, uh, they pretty much single-handedly conceived and built and deployed Wovo's online directory of, of vetted uh, voiceover pros, voiceover.biz. So Joe Davis, the founder of an internet uh, marketing and web development company, specializes in search engine optimization, pay-per-click advertising, and the creation of internet platforms. Joe has over 20 years experience in development and marketing, now has a focus on the voiceover industry with his business, voiceactorwebsites.com. He's the creator of numerous websites and platforms across a number of different industries, including Wovo's voiceover.biz and voiceoverx.com. What is voiceoverx? Well, that's the collaboration between Joe and our next guest, uh, Melissa Exelberth. And besides knowing the complexities of the VO marketplace in and out, Melissa is now working with Joe to conceive and deploy voiceoverx.com. So I'll let them explain how and why uh, the market needs this site. And those are the introductions. Thank you all for being here. I'll, I'll hand it over to Ann now for our first question. Great. Thanks so much. Thanks, everybody, for being here. And Hats off to Armin. Thank you so much for being here at, at that, the hour that you are. Uh, we really appreciate it, and I think it's truly a testament to your dedication to the voiceover community. So thanks for that. So I have, I'd like to start off with a question. You've run a, a successful online casting website since 2008. So tell us a little bit about the changes that you've seen in the industry and how your online casting model supports these changes, both technologically as well as within the community of voice seekers and voice talent. Well, um, when I started in 2008, or in 2007, I started programming with Elgo. The idea came um, because I was a talent myself for several years, and I couldn't find a website like that in, in Germany. But I knew Voices.com and Voice123, and I always thought, oh, why isn't there a German website? So this was the reason why I did it, because I thought, like the technology, uh, microphones, preamps, your own voice booth, it became so much cheaper than five or ten years ago, uh, back at uh, like 2008, like in the beginning of 2000. Hardly anybody could afford like a good microphone, a good preamp. But more and more voice talents had the chance to like bypass the, 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 the studios and, and do the stuff themselves. They did not depend on the studios any longer. But the thing they, I felt that they were missing were great opportunities to, to get work. Um, because they may be really, really good with the voices, but maybe they have not got the time to market themselves properly. And I thought that what um, uh, Voice123 and Voices.com did in the US uh, looked very, very interesting. And I ran around for two years thinking about, oh, why don't you do, uh, why doesn't anybody do it? So I, because I wanted jobs myself uh, through, through an online casting website. 
And then after two years, nobody did it. I said to myself, well, if nobody does it, I do it myself. And what I did not think about was uh, by, by doing Budalgo, I shot myself in the knee or in the foot, as you, you guys say, I believe, because, of course, I cannot audition for jobs that are posted on Budalgo. That's just not mm. on. So, um, yeah, maybe the idea was not so good then for me uh, at the end. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, um, uh, yeah, so, so and I think the major change is the technology and that the world has become um, uh, as small as the size of a screen, of, of mm -hmm. your browser screen. And this is the most important thing. And there are many, many people out there, um, we call it in, in Germany, we call them the, the old rabbits, the ones that are really experienced. And uh, I think some of them are missing, missing like the, 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 the train. They, they, they still think about like how it was like 20 years ago. But the world chain has changed dramatically. And uh, you have to find new ways to, to get uh, new, new voice speakers, new clients. And um, I think Bodalgo is not only like driving that change, but just um, yeah, um, we recognized it or I recognized it. And so did Voice123, Voice.com, uh, many, many others. Um, well, and, and, and we are just um, seeing that, that, that opportunity. So I wanted to ask you a little bit, you have some new technology that you've obviously um, are keeping up um, and, and changing and evolving with the times. Tell us a little bit about your new technology that you've just implemented. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity. Because, yeah. uh, I think it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing. It works like magic. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I relaunched Budalga two weeks ago. And not only did I completely revamp this, the website because the web technology changed so much since 2008. Um, we have now like the, all those um, responsive design stuff and, and all those things. And we have um, uh, Ajax, which is a technical term you don't have to know about too much, but it, it makes things easier uh, to use. And there is this bleeding edge technology called WebRTC, Web Real-Time Communication. And what it does basically is it enables everybody with a browser to have a peer-to-peer -peer connection, audio and video, uh, if you want to, uh, in very high quality. And so you don't need ISDN anymore. You don't need Source Connect. You don't need any piece of software. You don't need any piece of hardware either. You just need a, a, an internet connection and your browser. And then you just click a button and you can listen to the voice talent standing in his own voice booth and what you hear is exactly what he, what he speaks in the microphone. And for voice seekers, that's a fantastic way of course to, to, um, to be there when the recording is done or imagine the voice seeker himself or herself, she's like working on a client's behalf. And they want the clients to be there when the recording happens. So they, I don't know, they snuggle up in their offices or whatever, click mm -hmm. that button, call the, the, the voice talent. Uh, for the voice talent, it's a, it's, it could be a good thing and a bad thing as well. Because imagine you're a voice talent. And let's face it, I, I'm a voice talent myself. And it's not that great if you have the client on the phone all the time directing you. Because um, it, 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 it slows down work sometimes. So, mm -hmm. But on the other hand, it's... A super tool to get new clients when you say listen you don't have to book that uh, studio you don't have to to fly me from New York to Los Angeles uh, you just press that button in your browser and you will be right in my studio it will sound as if I'm sitting like next door you couldn't tell the difference mm -hmm. and I think that is a, a, a tremendous uh, tremendous tool to, to, mm -hmm. to, to get new clients Oh. And and I'm I'm interested, and I want to talk to the rest of the panel too, uh, because I know uh, the technical challenges of doing of evolving uh, an online casting system. So I'd I'd actually like to uh, ask a question of Simon. Um, Simon, you've run a successful casting website for ANG Audio uh, on maybe a smaller scale than you know. Uh, Voices or you know the other P2Ps, and I was really impressed with the transition that I saw personally from a traditional email based. Uh, system where you attach scripts and then you know requested auditions to now you have everything uh, handled online where people get the scripts and upload online so I'd like to know in your opinion first of all what are the desirable qualities of a an efficient casting system such as yours uh, and what does it take both conceptually and technically to get there well you know when when you uh, setting up a casting system you want to be able to 
have have it manage the database of talent in a way that it's easy to search uh, from the casting end. Now it's a little little bit of a misconception. We're not so much an online casting site as a production company that people come to uh, for productions, and then we we cast within our own okay. within our own mm-hmm. roster. So from the back end, when you're doing the casting, you know you you want to make sure that that every profile is tagged uh, tagged correct. And that all demos uh, are are represented um, uh, e- for each talent that that has uh, d- you know different demos to represent them, and and you want to make sure that the search is efficient, so that when you're casting, uh, you know when we get a request for 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 an audition, w- w- n- no talent falls through the through the through the cracks. You know we want to offer that opportunity to to everybody that fits the 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 typecast, and. Um, and then you know the reporting end to you want to make sure that you know who's turning in the auditions, who's not, and that, managing that, and um, uh, things things along those that that line. We're we're also rebranding and uh, re, re reworking our whole our whole site and, and, and all, all the systems uh, for 2016, and we're we're going to come out with a, a brand new look. Uh, we're we're going to feel more like an agency than uh, than uh, an online casting site because I think that's that's just been a common misconception when people visit our site. You know, I think it's interesting to note that that Simon uh, says we're, we're not a casting site; we're just a production site. But yet, you see the convergence, mm-hmm. you know, of agency work and production work and casting sites coming together digitally online. I think that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm just curious. Yeah, and Simon um, says intentionally. Say again, Joe. I said, did you use Simon Says intentionally? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that we, we, yeah, that's an ongoing joke around here. <laughs> uh, I'd like to talk to Dan for a little bit here. As Wovo's vice president, you've taken on an enormous responsibility with voiceover.biz, and I completely understand and respect that from a technical standpoint because I used to work uh, on large-scale websites. So I have a little bit of an idea of what it takes, uh, or what's involved, I guess, in, a, in an online casting system. So I know companies that have paid tens of thousands of dollars. I mean, this is not a small, it's not a small job to do, to put something like this together. So what do you see uh, are the greatest project management challenges for voiceover.biz? And, and, you know, what can the voiceover community do to help, if, if anything? Well, to start off with, we don't really want to look at it as a, quote, casting site. Okay. Uh, voiceover.biz really its original intention and I, and I think we want to keep it that way is as a searchable directory of the professional membership of World Voices Organization people who have been you know, vetted people who, you know, people who are watching who are Wobo members know they've been professionally vetted we know that they, they're, they're, the quality of what they put out there is there so if somebody's going to look for a good talent all they have to do is go to voice, you know, voiceover.biz and they're going to find somebody who already they can trust. And I think that's a big problem that we've seen in the industry is you have a lot of producers uh, and, and people who are hiring talent who may be listening to auditions of people who just really are not very good or very qualified for doing this type of work. And, or they have a home studio and they're, they see anybody who is a freelance voice actor who has a home studio obviously is not good enough for me. I need to go somewhere else. Well, if they need to go that place, voiceover.biz is that place because they know mm-hmm. the people there have been professionally vetted. Now, putting the thing together was mostly uh, Mr. Davis's job uh, mm-hmm. as he really was the, the brains behind it all. We just decided that we needed to do something uh, that would help the voiceover industry. We looked at the, the, the uh, pay-to-play model that was out there. And uh, what Joe did, and he can explain this to you, is we essentially reverse engineered what the other pay-to-plays were doing. Mm-hmm. And uh, we took what we, the design was to take out the interference, the middleman that a pay-to-play site would have. Whereas you've got to communicate through that site and therefore they control the communication in the case of several of the other pay-to-play networks uh, where they were controlling the entire financial transaction. Uh, which, of course, uh, came to a head a couple of weeks ago. And so we believe that voiceover.biz, strictly being a searchable roster with people's demos and their bios and all those things, allows people to do a very simple search. They search for 
you know, German accent or for Hungarian accent or Silesian accent or whatever. <laughs> and if whatever specific thing they're looking for, a deep voice, baritone voice, that sort of thing, whatever is put into somebody's profile is searchable by those search terms. And they'll find not 500 people or a thousand people do to go through their database, but a much smaller number of highly vetted professional voice actors. And that we thought was a much better idea. And uh, right now, it certainly seems to be, uh, it seems, seems to be working for some people. And, uh, and that was the most important thing. Could I jump in here? Please. Uh, I, I definitely uh, agree that there is a, um, a really big problem on, uh, on the quality of some talents, so they say. Um, <laughs> The, um, yeah, you just have to, to go to the usual suspects. And then when, when I browse for German talents on, on other websites, I click, uh, I listen to their demos and I see ABCD is not even native German. DEF uh, has a, like a hiss in, in, in his recordings and well, and probably like recorded it in his bathroom. Um, so there are many, many websites that just don't filter their, their, their talents, um, that do not reject talents. And I, I'm pretty proud to say that every talent that um, that um, applied to be a member of Bodalgo, is that like correct English? Applied to be a member of Bodalgo? Oh, yes. Well. Yes. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, I, I, um, I look at every profile myself. <coughs> and uh, of 16,000 people that applied so far in the last eight years, only like 5,000 made it to the database. Now I don't speak a hundred languages, so I can I can I can tell if somebody's native English. I can tell, of course, if somebody is native German, but um, with other languages, it's much more difficult. So there could be a, a few talents that that others would like, kind of question: Are they really professionals? But what I can say is that um, everybody has a professional demo. It's 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 recorded in a professional way, and if somebody has like is has as a recording that is professional and sounds professional but well, chances are even if I don't understand Spanish that well that um that he's a he's a he's a, a genuine voice talent Armin so, do you do you have a, a fr say a French voice talent or a Swedish or a Danish voice talent who can vet those demos for you who can do what for me who can uh, qualify those those new demos for you who can is, who can say is, yes that's yeah. a that's a native Danish tongue or this would would be, and I thought about this uh, quite a couple of times in the, in the, within the last years. Shouldn't I go like speak to some U.S. talents, some even English talents, some French, Spanish, all those languages, and say, can you please like certify them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, this is not off the table. It was not my top priority because the the the, the feedback from the from the voice seekers did not suggest that they have a lot of problems mm. with the quality mm. of, the, uh, of the voice talents. But then there are voice seekers out there that might not even know what to look for to judge if somebody is a really good voice talent or not. This is another issue, completely different discussion. Right. Can I jump in here a sec? Absolutely. Um, because I, I think it's going to be difficult for any one person to vet whether somebody's um, speech is native or not. It may be easier if, you, if you're a small country uh, but it takes something like Spanish. Spanish is spoken differently in every single region of every single Spanish-speaking country on, on the planet. In Mexico alone, you've got 52 indigenous languages, aside from Spanish. Mm. Everyone brings their own accent yes. to that. Mm -hmm. You've also got talent who are not native Spanish, who are bilingual, who may have an accent, who may not have an accent. That accent could appear different to different people uh, different native Spanish speaking people from wherever they are. So I would think it's going to be really difficult to get, I would have to say that the, it's the end client who's going to have to have somebody on their end to determine whether the Spanish or the English or the Danish or the German is what they are looking for, for their project. Yeah. I, think, I think it is our, our responsibility, uh, ideally, the, the, the websites themselves have to make sure that the client gets mm -hmm. what, what they want. They, they should not have to go run around looking themselves for persons that say, yes, this is, a, this is the, the, the voice you're looking for. Um, I, fe I, I feel that the, the websites, we have to offer that as a, as a service, but mm -hmm. it's very difficult. I fully agree what you're saying. And even if you ask like 
two people, is he native? One could say yes, the other one could say no. Right. Very subjective. We've we've run into that with World Voices. Uh, we've had a number of Spanish-speaking people ask that we uh, split up our, our Spanish-speaking population of voice actors into different uh, sections. And, and uh, uh, as Melissa has alluded to, it's very difficult to judge that. It's a very subjective thing, and and we're not in the in the place to do that. It it really becomes the reason uh, of our objective evaluation of our talent is mostly through how many jobs, how many paid jobs, how many qualified paid jobs have they done in the last year. We're not getting into the subjective evaluation of the quality of their voice. But to be to be fair, the issue doesn't seem to be that big when I use the, the feedback I get as like, like a measurement. Um, it, it doesn't seem to be that big of an issue. Maybe, maybe I'm overthinking it, but um, it's definitely something, and I come back to the idea with um, getting some people out of several countries helping me to identify like the black sheep. I think, I think what I really like about uh, the, the commonality in, in all of these, voiceover biz and, and Baldago, and, uh, is that there is a process of qualifying. And so I think that in terms of, you know, quality and being able to offer quality, you know, quality talent to, you know, to voice seekers, I, I think that that's an important concept in, in providing a good service. And I'd like to actually talk a little bit about the technical end of things um, and, and ask Joe, what, what do you see as the greatest challenges in the creation uh, of something that can serve the talent in, in such a way on the technical side of things? Well, the obvious challenge is making everybody happy. So you, you have, even just within um, the subcategory of voice talent in voiceover, you have so many different diverse um, goals that people have. And so matching those goals to whatever technical restrictions you're working within. As uh, you mentioned before, just as simple as there's many different countries that have Spanish as a language. And so do you have Spanish as a parent category? and then different countries as a subcategory? Do you just have one overarching category or do you have many categories? And although those things may sound simple, on the technical side, you can get more and more complex as you add layers. So, so, so matching those, those needs or those desires of people to the, the technical abilities of a site. And you know, in today's world, there, there's so much that has already been developed that researching what other people have done, researching other technology, and then incorporating that is, can be a, a great way to do stuff in an affordable way. The, the flip side of it is, is that it wasn't necessarily built for your purpose. So then you either have to, to modify it or say, okay, well, this was a good idea and I'm going to have to build it from scratch based on what I learned from this. And so the, the, the technical restrictions are less when you build something from scratch because then you're, you'll build it, you're building it from the ground up with whatever your purpose is. But, of course, it takes more time, more development costs, et cetera. Is that the case with VoiceOver Biz? You've built that from scratch, from the ground up? So it's, 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 most of it is built from scratch. It's mm -hmm. actually, it's based on, the backbone is WordPress. So mm -hmm. WordPress has become so powerful nowadays oh. that you can run anything from a car dealer you know, website to a complex online marketplace. And so the backbone is WordPress, but everything from there is custom built. Mm. And I'd like to talk to you what, a, a little bit about uh, Melissa, voiceoverx.com. You two are working together. If you could tell us a little bit about that, what are the, what are the goals of voiceoverx.com? There's, there's actually a number of people that have contributed to this. That um, it's uh, Basically, the, the idea came about when we got tired of third parties who are not vested in our industry changing our industry for their own benefit and not for the benefit of keeping of keeping this a viable and professional career for anybody so we decided that it's time to take it back uh, and that's really that's really what it comes down to it's a community for those of us who who work in the industry and and who know the value of voiceover work and who know our own value as talent to put everything back in our own hands. And it's a, you know, it's, it's different from other platforms, from other sites in that we want everybody. We want everybody. We want people who are just starting out because we want them to get to know the business from the point of view of the value of the business. 
and not from the point of view of other entities who have decided to sell us as commodities and teach talent and new producers alike that you're worth nothing other than that what they want to give you out of, say, a, a client's global budget or, or whatever. So the idea is to get as many people as possible. And through the site, we basically provide a mechanism to, to filter people. But we can filter people through, if you're a union talent, that's its own self, that's its own filtering. Um, if you have agents, you're, you know, you're obviously, you're, you're filtered on that. If it, to Wovo, we, we have a direct link to Wovo. If somebody comes to the site and says, oh, well, I don't want to bother with all of these people here who really don't, I don't know what they do, you can go directly to Wovo. And talent on Wovo has been vetted. So we want everybody for education purposes because we want to teach people that their work has value. And so and really, the, the, uh, another big part of it is that we want it to be a workspace. So it, it's not just a place where people come and, and look for talent. It's a place where producers can come and manage the demos of the, the people that they work with. Agents can list their talent. Casting directors are a part of it. And so, you know, part of the, the problem with the online model up until now is that it's eliminated certain roles in the voiceover industry that certainly were important, like casting directors and, and agents to some extent. And so uh, a big part of this is bringing those people back into the picture in a real way that adds value to the marketplace and people will understand why they're important. So is it similar to Blink in, in a sense where then, uh, let's say, an agent would have to pay a subscription to have their roster included on there? Or is it something that uh, voice talent will have to pay a subscription to be a part of? Or do producers have to? I mean, how, 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 um, how does it monetize? So at, at this point, um, it's free for everyone. And that's the goal, to keep it free for everyone. Because we want as, as large a pool as possible. As Melissa said, if you want to educate the industry, if you want to really reach out to those people who are not a part of Wova, who are not a part of the guild, who are, are not aware of really what the important things are in the industry, then you need to throw, you need to create as big an umbrella as possible. And so the goal is to keep it free for everyone, support it with advertising revenue, perhaps other things, but really we, want, we don't want subscription fees for, for talent, for producers, for anyone. How, how will the... That's, really, that, I'm that's sorry. a really great thing. And that, that, that's one thing that... Uh, uh, has kind of kept us away from uh, joining a uh, thing like Voice Bank. You know, uh, we spend the majority of our day uh, reaching out to agencies, producers, other production companies, and people nationwide. And uh, a lot of people are like, well, we go through Voice Bank. You know, but for, to go through there, you have to you have to sign up. You have a subscription, uh, even as a production company. And um, and I think it's a great thing you guys are doing. So, so just to give you an example of the, the value that we're trying to add for producers is. Um, a producer can go and select the, the talent that they work with. You know, many production houses have a list of, say, the, the top 100 talent or 50 talent that they work with on a routine basis on their website. But the problem is that production houses are not web development companies. And so new talent um, start working with them, old talent leave, talent have new demos, and it just it doesn't get updated. And so all of this can be now managed from one central interface and then is pulled to the production house's website. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. But what That's I great. understand is, um, I mean, clearly you're offering a great, great service to the industry. And I'm a firm believer that if you offer a great service, a great service needs to be paid for. Uh, it doesn't need to be paid for like on a subscription basis. Uh, there can be different models. But um, I'm, I think, or I question, why free? If you have a great, great product and it helps people, then uh, you're more than welcome to, to charge money for it. Yeah, that's perfectly valid, and it, it's something that we thought about a lot. Again, we want the largest pool possible, and so um, at its basic functionality, it should always be free for everyone. Maybe down the road, if there's some premium functions that we add in that we think um, really add value to a certain aspect of the industry. Yeah, like like, like the rest that you just, you just explained. I mean, this is, this is definitely something that helps so much, like a, a casting agency, whatever, um, studios where they can like completely outsource that and have a nice, nice user interface and all of that things. And definitely that should, shouldn't go for free because well, advertising is, 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 is not a very solid ground for, for, for monetizing a website. I have the feeling. Well, so Google makes their market cap is $500 billion <laughs> and 92% of that comes from advertising. 
Yeah, but they have, they have trillions and, and trillions of hits every day. That is no, terrible. I think uh, there might be a, a, a certain vector in this whole argument, uh, mm -hmm. Armin, that says we're we're so we're so dinged by you know we're so shy of the Voices dot com and the Voice One Two Three mm -hmm. subscription models that that we're just we're just going the other way entirely. And, mm -hmm. and I I agree with you that probably a great service to be taken seriously might want to have a subscription. Um, well, how I, tip, I, I tip the hat to Joe and, and Melissa for yeah. going free. I think uh, it's it's a reaction to the marketplace that was so predatory to begin with. Mm. Well. And how will you support the maintenance and the you know and the development? I mean, Joe, I know I I know people pay thousands of dollars for that type of development. So how are you proposing to 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 fund that? Um, well, first of all, I have spent thousands of dollars already. Mm -hmm. I believe but, it. But um, also, you know, I, I work a lot with the voiceover industry. Mm -hmm. And so just by the very fact that um, I've gotten business from people who have interacted with the website helps provide um, money to continue development. So uh, as, as long as I am not going to go bankrupt and, you know, um, Melissa and other people who are involved, uh, I think we, we really want to see this to its logical, see it down as a logical course, which would be as more and more aspects of the industry get involved. And, you know, a lot of what we're seeing is, Someone like a casting director will come and say, you know, I really wish there was a way for me to do X. And then we'll, we'll, we'll review it. And we've actually added in, added in a number of those suggestions that people have come up with. And some of them are in the pipeline. So um, another possible way of, of monetizing it would be down the road as people request these types of functionality, they could foot the bill for the development cost and for that specific functionality and then it would be made available to the wider community. That's, that's kind of the whole open source movement where someone develops something, bears the cost of it, but then provides it as value for everyone else. I, I might also... So this model takes out the, this model takes out the middleman skimming, uh, which is a big yes. thing that was happening uh, with those other sites that we hear well, that, about. Yes, that, 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 yes. that's part of it. Yeah, the, the, the idea here, well, one, one big part of this is the voice actor is taking control back of part of this process, uh, which was, as you were saying, uh, Simon, there, it was being controlled by these third parties who understand perhaps the communication part of it, but may not understand completely the the intimate relationship you've got to have with, with a client to create that relationship and build that relationship. And, and by oh, yeah, and, and the fact it's, it's your voice. So this is uh, for, by voice talent for voice talent and, uh, and to service the, uh, the ad industry, I think it's a great thing. Yeah. yeah, and it's not it's not just the voice talent um, taking it back. It's 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 producers, it's agents, mm -hmm. it's casting directors, speakers. I mean, there's 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 mm -hmm. a, there's a huge huge difference between hiring a casting director who's been casting for twenty years, uh, who knows how this job is done, and between going to a website where an intern or somebody just out of school who doesn't know the industry is all of a sudden appointed to decide. Who has the right auditions or for commissioned, a client? commissioned a person doing commissioned exactly? You know, it's uh, it's it's a world of difference. I, I see. I completely see see the point you're you're making, and uh, I believe it's it's absolutely true and valid for many many jobs. But what about all those little companies, like the little shop around the corner that needs um, a little voiceover for? for his online uh, clip that is like a 60 second clip uh, of what he does. Does he need a casting director as well? And can he, can he afford one? And I would, would doubt that. On the other hand, um, yeah, you're right. Um, like uh, the, 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 the middleman um, seems to have been quite a topic uh, lately in the industry. And Bodalgo never had a middleman because the talent and the voice seeker always were connected directly. Uh, we were never um, um, like like um, the messages don't, doesn't don't even run through the system. It's it's them basically mailing to each other, and and also we don't have things like an escrow service because all those those things that only make money for the for the guys that are offering it um, are harming. And I, I wrote that in the in the in the mail back to the open letter that uh, we saw on the website. Um, they're, they're, they're just harming the industry and, and are not beneficial to the voice talents nor the voice seeker because they have to pay the price. And um, yeah, we always um, refuse to, to go down that road.
when Dan and I were doing the planning for voiceover.biz, that was a big conversation. Do we want communications to go via the site or not? And ultimately, we decided against it. So any form of communication actually takes place, as you said, via email outside of the server. Yeah, and, and there's, there's, um, you're absolutely right that there are small jobs, of course, that don't need casting directors where it's the no local nail salon or, or whatever. And people should be connecting with each other and, and working things out that provide value to both the person who's hiring a voice talent and the voice talent. And 40%, 70%, 90% of that value shouldn't be mm -hmm. skimmed off by a, a by a conglomerate that's putting that money in their own pockets yeah, and refusing, so. you know refusing contact between people. So you know, that really well, is a lot of the goes without saying. Doing this. And on top of the skimming, you also have the, the, the outrageous subscriptions that you have to pay. I mean, mm -hmm. I've never been a fan of the pay-to-play side. I, you know, I, I, I'd like to maybe propose or throw out an idea and see what you guys think about it. But in terms of educating, right? So if we're, you know, going the other direction with VoiceOver Biz and, and VoiceOver X, in terms of educating, um, let's say the new person who is, you know, doesn't necessarily know what to charge for a job, you know, what if we did have, you know, some sort of support, I don't know, chat on live chat or, or uh, maybe phone support so that if they're trying to decipher or decide on a fair rate that that somebody that has you know some longevity in the industry could maybe help well this this was something that we discussed you know certainly with voiceover.biz uh, about creating an educational component that there mm -hmm. should be uh, we're going to have a blog on there and I think on voiceover X too talking about these issues and mm -hmm. getting both parties to talk about these things and make it part of the conversation and make it part of the functionality of the website. So it becomes more of a community thing as opposed to right. just a marketplace. And that was, uh, that's something that- And there, there is a forum aspect to VoiceOver X. Is that correct, Melissa? There is a forum function? Uh, we've got, right, right now we've moved away from that um, just temporarily while we're getting things set up. What we do have, is we have, uh, I call it blog, call it in, in industry thoughts, uh, whatever. You can actually, if you've got something to say, you can, you can do a blog post there. Uh, if, you, if there's an aspect of the industry that you know a lot about and think people should know, you can just go and, and put it up there. We're arranging that. We're, we're finding the, the best place for it and, and, and the best way to use that. But there are a number of things up there now. Uh, that people have that people have contributed. We've gotten a post from casting director. We've gotten posts from different people. Um, there's a, a I actually started to put up um, some things on how to break down, say, union rates for for people for whom that is just Byzantine in its complexity. Um, and uh, so anybody can go and and post something that is of value to to the community because we all have different knowledge. And everybody's knowledge, everybody who works in this industry, we, we all have knowledge that that's, provides value to the industry, to everybody in it. Let, let me ask Armin a question that's in a different direction. Armin, you, you sit at, at the crux of uh, an international marketplace uh, more than any of the other uh, two big casting sites. Um, you're based in Germany. You see a lot of talent from Europe and America. Uh, what changes do you see in the marketplace? Is, is digital... Yeah, making a, a mark on the marketplace? Uh, is it incurring on, on the, uh, the marketplace more than before? Mm, what do you mean by digital? Like digital media. Uh, we're seeing, at least in America, a lot of, uh, say, YouTube pre-rolls or requests for voice yeah, yeah, yeah. talent to, uh, to do, uh, to do um, things that are not broadcast, not radio, not TV, but internet. And we're having a tough time nailing down compensation rates for, for digital products uh, Guess who that, has yeah. troubles as well. Yeah. Um, so this is a major point. Okay, let's uh, first things first. There is a the, the there's a tremendous amount of jobs that are online clips. They could be the YouTube clip of the nail salon uh, down the road, which is not running as a pre-roll, but just like on on their homepage and is hosted on on YouTube. And there's the first there start the first problem starts there because. If it's online, it's worldwide. And many talents in Germany say, well, it's worldwide. I want to have a couple of hundred euros for, for that thing because like a national TV spot in Germany begins with like 600 euros. So they want to have that as well. 
and that's where I come. I, I, I try to buffer between those, uh, like a little buffer between those two sides, because it's highly unfair. If it's really the nail salon that is just doing local business, she can't or he can't afford 600 euros for a little clip that is seen maybe by a thousand people in two years. That is just not fair. So people have to, 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 to come up with a better solution. So far, we haven't won. And the other thing is with, uh, it, and it's the same for pre-rolls. Um, if, if there is a media budget, um, but it's, it's, it's only like a local business or regional business, not a national or worldwide business, there needs to be um, a, a separate um, a rate for that. And so far, Germany has completely failed in uh, delivering a rate. At the moment, they are saying, if it's online, it's a minimum of yada, yada, yada. And, um, and, and what makes it even more complex, we are like, I'm in Germany, so we have a, a price list, what talents ask for, for regional, national, TV spot, e-learning, you, you name it. We have a price list for everything, and I think it's 2,000 different ones. Um, so what about the client that comes from Spain? He wants to have a German voice sector, but Spain has completely different uh, price lists. So has Italy. Or what about India, China? And then it's like really getting mad. Mm -hmm. But I had a very good conversation with the voice talent and she said to me, yeah, but we have to pay the rent and our food in Germany. And this is, and if somebody wants a German talent, he wants to market into the German market. That's a market where you can do, make a lot of money. And this is why I'm asking for the price. And I think that's a very, very fair argument that she's having there. Right. But, it doesn't work, but it doesn't work all the time. And it, it maybe works for Germany, but then how about, I don't know, uh, Brazil, Argentina, <laughs> what, what is the price? What are the price lists? Right. So this is very, very, very difficult. It's that global marketplace that's really, uh, it's always in flux. And, and because there are so many new clients, uh, like you mentioned, India, Singapore, Japan, uh, you know, how do you find a, a commonality? Uh, I think a lot of voice actors in America are just saying, look, this is my price. Uh, either you can accept it or not, and, and uh, it, it becomes a matter of self-worth. You know, what do you think you're worth? What do you think you put right. into your, your equipment, your coaching, your practice? You, know? you also have to look at the end use of that and where it's going to go. I mean, if you're talking about India, for instance, in a lot of instances, large American companies outsource to India because they know they'll get back a product done by Americans for the American market at a fraction of the cost. So, yeah. so it behooves any talent to, to see who they're ultimately working for. Yeah. Absolutely. And of course, yeah. the, the, the talents need to be absolutely confident about what they charge. And this is what I'm yes. telling them for eight years now. You, when, because they're, they're coming to me and said, Armin, what should I charge? Should I be on the low side? Should I be on the high side? I said, you should be on your side. Mm -hmm. You have your price list and you charge what you think you should charge mm -hmm. and stay with your price list. You may not nail every job, but when you nail a job, well, then, then it's making ring, ring. And um, I think that's the, the, the most important to, to stick with your personal price yeah. list if you have one. This, this, um, this, I think it's also important to be flexible uh, with, uh, with that in mind that, hey, you know, a budget in, in Tina or Venezuela might not be as much as a budget in New York City. Um, so keeping in mind your worth and all, all that you've invested in your career, but at the same time, uh, you know, being flexible and, and, hey, if it's a 10-second spot and they don't need to be on the line, you know, being flexible and saying, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. Because ultimately, you have to think of your bottom line as well. But again, everybody, uh, everybody defines their own worth uh, in the marketplace. Well, you don't want to alienate uh, potential new clients just because, like, you're, you're overshooting. And if, especially if they're from a market where their prices tend to be lower. But, uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. Flexibility, of course, needs to be there. Yeah, as, as far as, as World Voices organization is concerned, part of our mission is to raise the awareness of the professionalism that it takes to be a voice actor, that we're being discounted by a lot of people saying, oh, you just read for a living. Well, part of what we're trying to do is educate everybody that this is not an easy job. This is not just something anybody can do. And you have to, and as an organization, we stand up and speak for all of us by saying, look, 
This is a hard profession. We didn't just step in front of a USB microphone and get it done one day. We've practiced, as we've all been saying, we've gotten coaching, we've invested in equipment, and we have spent years learning our craft. We're not, you know, we're, we're not selling pencils on a corner here. And, mm -hmm. and that's the most important thing that we try to do as an organization. Well we said, Dan. Yeah. We understood yeah. that we are professionals. And actually, if I can jump in just for a second, um, because it, it fits really well. The new Bodelgo, um, or no, I come from the other way around. Many, many jobs on Bodelgo got rejected because the budget was not up to scratch. And um, I always had to write to those, to those seekers and had to fight with them. Well, go up with your budget, otherwise the job won't get posted. This is very crucial because it's... Well, I could get in legal trouble. Oh, is that on air? Huh. Um, because um, it's, it's kind of not really super allowed that you tell people what they are willing to pay for. So, um, but Bodalga has a new feature built in. When you now post a job, the system tries to automatically detect if the, if the budget is correct. And if it's not correct, you can't post the job. And I'm tracking at the moment, if people are alienated and run away because the system will not let their job go through on their first try. But what I see is the people move up their budgets. If it doesn't work for 150 to 250, they try 250 to 350. If that doesn't work, they go up one more. Only a tiny, tiny fraction goes away. And well, I say, bye bye, fine, because we don't need you. And um, That's very uh, so far, very this, seems, interesting. this seems to work at the moment. Also, and I have to say, I, I did it also to get a uh, workload off of my shoulders mm -hmm. because it's very annoying mm -hmm. and time-consuming. Go back and forth with the client telling them the, where the budget needs to be. Mm -hmm. So this all is also for my own good, but I think it educates, and that was the point that I, was want, I wanted to make because we were talking about education. Sure. This educates the voice right. seeker what to expect. Mm -hmm. It's great. Next yeah. time the website he knows oh yeah uh the online thing wasn't that like something in the 250s boom there you go armin i love it and I, i'm just curious if you have any statistics on um how much they come under before they they hit the price point that is acceptable is there an average like they're usually 20 percent under or 10 percent under no um i i think um uh, well, well some, uh, like, first of all, most of the, of the guys get it right in the first time because they maybe have known Bodalga for a few years. Or they, 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 they. But the new, the, the, the new guy, um, they uh, tend to shoot very low. Um, and then when you look at the email addresses and you see, oh, that's, that's a, a company. That's not a production house. That's right. like, like, that's like the, the company mm -hmm. that never booked a, a talent before themselves. That's right. That's fantastic. And they try to shoot low and they see, oh, mm -hmm. didn't work. And then they go up. And this is, I think, well, but I have to say, I hope, I hope this doesn't backfire, but um, then I will find a solution. I, I, I think, think it will. I, I, I think, think we're all on the same page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think yeah, that's well, super I know, helpful. It will, back, no, it will not backfire from the voice talents, but it could backfire mm -hmm. from other people that don't want, well, Let's, let's, let's not um, talk about it too much. Well, it's a filter. It's a sort of a filter, and, really. Yeah, yes, and, and I think is. it's an educational filter, too, because I think a lot of times the companies, when they're not familiar with casting, right, they don't do this all the time. They don't have an awareness either, and it's harder for us. Like, we can get education out in our community. It's harder for us to educate on, on a grander scale to, to the voice seeker, you know, and they absolutely need to be as educated as, as we are. And so yeah, they, they that, do. That's a, 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 I think that's a great step. And, and, and they're absolutely willing to learn. It's, it's yeah. when mm -hmm. I talk to so many clients, and when and sometimes, well, it, maybe it's 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 the German in me because I, I sometimes I'm a bit on the very direct side. Let's say that way. <laughs> and then people come back to me. Oh, oh sorry, there's no offense. I just don't. I didn't know uh, any better. Right. And I said, well, now you know, and um, mm -hmm. uh, and 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 play <laughs> and, and and stick to the rules. Yeah, a lot of, I think it's all, I mean, I think it's all great. I think it's all excellent. Um, a lot of the problem is that as you know, we, we've got the convergence of, of what had been two completely different markets in the past, uh, which was you got voice talent by going to the union and by going through agents and a new market that sprang up with the advent of technology and the internet, which is anybody can do this. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. now what you've got is you've gotten people, I mean, this is now, 
ge a generation and a half into this, you know, at least a generation into this. And people are coming into the industry, both on the talent end and on the production end, on the client end, and they don't know how it works because the old paradigms no longer work. They don't, well, I don't need, you know, a talent from here or I don't need a talent from there. So when you have third parties who are not vested in our industry telling talent, you know something, I'm going to pay you $50 for this job because that's what you're worth. The next producer that goes to that talent says, how much do you want? And they say $50. And that's, that's I have to ask a question. Is, is there a website out there that, that tells the talents, uh, sorry, you only can charge $50? Uh, because well, I if, if you, haven't heard about a website that works like that. Well, the, okay. I think the, the, if, if, you go, if you look at any of the online websites, if you, go, if you work through, say, through voices.com, they, they have ranges. One, they, one range, their lowest range is $100 to $250. Yeah. Okay, and they will they, they they will give you that range and tell and basically tell you that this this is the range that you should be you should be bidding for. Um, when things come in that are worth multiples of that, and another an, an extra zero or two at the end of yes. that number, they will still go into that range. Very oh, okay, I see. Yeah, okay, that's so, what. So you do have. Yeah, I get it. Yes. So, so, so there you've got a third party mm. who has decided what they are willing to pay talent because if you also take a look um, closely, another thing that talent needs to be aware of as well as, as clients are the terms that you're signing on to when you're using uh, a lot of the online casting sites. Uh, there, it, it's, it's very clear in the terms of Voices.com, for instance, you can just, you can go look at, uh, at their, uh, it's paragraph six, it says assignment. It says that all of the work that you do, you're turning over all of the rights to your work to them, oh. to Voices.com, and yeah. then they will turn the audio over to the client. Okay. So, you know, that leaves a lot of questions about... No, you know, actually, questions. it doesn't leave too many questions, and it doesn't leave <laughs> any rights to the talent. Well, <laughs> exactly. But, but, you know, this is, this, this is, this is where we're all... Uh, this, this is where we but, are today yeah, well, okay. and, uh, and, and I think we're all on the same page here as far as 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 keeping this industry a professional industry taking Are back we? what what is ours no. uh, yes. I think yes. the pendulum swang swang swung swung uh, too much in, in one direction <laughs> and, and it'll come back uh, because I, I'm a firm believer in in, uh, in the in the powers of a free market and um If uh, too many people are getting not very happy with a market uh, participant, uh, he will lose market share um, one or the other way, and mm -hmm. so that this will, will the healing will 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 go on. I was interested in a remark you made, Armin, about in Germany we have this rate card, and you said there were many levels oh. of who, who who sets that. I mean, is that just understood and it's accepted across Germany? No. <laughs> So okay. there, there, there are there are a few rate cards. Um, there are a few big um, agencies like the traditional agencies that have like proper offices with people actually doing some work, not like me, where I'm just sitting. <laughs> no, they're, they're, and they're probably connected with studios and then so on. And they issue a rate card. Okay, and like for all the talents that work with them, the rate card will will be the same. Hmm. Um, and also we have a rate card. This is set up even without asking the talents. It uh, was called the, the Hamburg rate list or rate, Hamburg rate card, but they changed the name now. And um, they didn't even bother to ask the biggest union of voice talents before they issued the rate card. Mm. So that was kind of weird. Okay. And then the union really got upset about it and they're, they're discussing uh, the outcome with them right now. The, the issue is there are so many rate cards. They had too many rate cards. And, and which one is mm -hmm. now the valid ones? And, and you could be, as a voice talent, you could be with different agencies and you have mm -hmm. different rate right. cards. It doesn't work properly. And, and we don't need a thousand rate cards, I think. Um, but it, it, this will not change. And, um, but they're not so far. Like, the, the differences are not too big. But um, still, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a bit um, weird. Is it a responsibility? for, you know, perhaps World Voices Organization or even, you know, uh, the endeavors that we're, we're trying right now. Is it a responsibility for us to come up with a rate card? What do you guys think? For who? For who? 
Oh, for so, US? For, for Germany? Yeah, for voices, voiceover.biz, voiceover.x. Is it, you know, should we come up with a rate card? What do you guys think? That's really tough. Uh, you know, we've we've wrestled with this at World Voices, and and we uh, we suggest rates, and we have a lit, we have a resources of different rate cards. Melissa's given us some ideas for some great rate cards. There's the handy dandy one, and mm-hmm. and the union has its own standard. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think what we've discussed earlier is, you know, what is your self worth? What can you do? What can you stand to be able to pay your bills? Uh, and mm-hmm. and what Simon said is, you got to be a little bit flexible sometimes. Uh, it's almost mm-hmm. on an individual basis anymore, but but we try to keep keep it, you know, a high standard. Dan, mm-hmm. give me that th- might be an interesting opportunity to engage some of the Wovo membership is have some online polls or surveys yes. where you're asking, you know, is this a good rate? What do you right. think? Well, Sean Caldwell did something like mm-hmm. that, but we could do it again. I say and, we should do it again. And mm-hmm. I can certainly, you know, add it to, to um, voiceover.biz. It's no problem. So let mm-hmm. me know and we'll put that okay. up. Yeah. Well, we're, uh, we're really seeing a convergence of a global marketplace here, and I, I think we've touched on some great topics. And, and uh, Armin, uh, at that early hour of the morning, we, we just so appreciate you being here to talk to us. And, and we find your service fascinating. We, we uh, uh, at least on the surface, uh, a lot of us really think you're doing an ethical job of, of running a, a great service, not getting in the way, not taking anything mm-hmm. uh, out of it uh, in the transaction. And uh, I salute you for that. I think it's really a wonderful yeah. machine. Uh, Melissa X, uh, you're, you're starting this new uh, voiceover dot, voiceoverx.com. It's, it looks great. Uh, we're excited about it. We're, we're happy to, as World Voices, we're happy to interface with you on that and, uh, and uh, really appreciate your work. And you and Joe are – Joe, I don't know where you get all the energy, man. Joe, thank you. You're yeah. nonstop. That was brilliant. That was brilliant. Yeah. He, he's Melissa great. and Dan have both been amazing, so I, I can't say how much help they've – there have been a lot of 3 a.m. calls. <laughs> and Dan, uh, Dan Leonard, uh, yeah, I know you and Joe are longtime friends. You've worked together a lot on this, and I can't tell you how much it's helped voiceover.biz. Yeah. We're really excited about where that's going. So, Simon, uh, I'm signing off here because we're about at one hour, and I like to try to keep it to an hour. And uh, Simon Lopez, uh, we so appreciate your presence and your comments here today. Thank you for coming. I appreciate, uh, I appreciate uh, being included, and uh, I thank you all for your time and your talent. Thank you. And uh, like I said, Joe, you're, you're a genius, man. We, uh, we, we appreciate all you do. And, and uh, I think we had another successful roundtable. Oh, absolutely. I sincerely appreciate all of you guys. Thank you so much for, for the efforts that you're putting into to really help this industry. I mean, it's just, it's amazing. It's and discussion. I'm proud to be among you. So thank you. I really am too. Well, um, I will... Um, I will say thank you and salute you and, uh, and uh, thank you for all that you do to help the industry and, and raise the awareness. I, we really think education and awareness and, and mentoring is, is a big part of all of World Voices and, and I think it behooves all of us to, to contribute to that. So thank you very much for your time and, and talent today. Thanks. Thank you, Dave. All right. We'll sign thank off you. here then. Thank you. Bye-bye.